Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is Mr. Gary Robinson, the VP of Enterprise Solutions at Pila. Hey, Gary, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Corey. Thanks for having me on here today. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it's my honor to have you as a guest. I'm a huge fan of what you do and what your company does. I'd love to hear about your background a little bit before we start. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you for, for having me as a guest. So my name is Gary Robinson. I'm the Vice President of Enterprise Solutions for, for Pila. And uh, I've been in the field of advancing sustainability now for about 29 years. Started my career as a research scientist with Kraft Foods and uh, was doing early developments in packaging and packaging sustainability. One of the first college, first projects I did out of college was looking at the beverage division and trying to determine the most sustainable package solution. Should we consider things like, you know, drink boxes or a blow molded bottle or a stand-up flexible pouch, you know, like a Capri Sun pouch. And these were yeah. the options that you know, I was launching into early in my career. And I'd just say that that was uh, an interesting start for me because the fact that it really cemented for me the importance of sustainability and, you know, it coveted my heart at that point. And, and the reason being is that, you know, as a consumer, we always experience sustainability in the singularity, right? Yeah. You, you have one one cup of coffee and you're thinking about, you know, what I do with this cup. But yeah. when you transition over to like a corporate position, I felt the weight of the responsibility of the decisions that I was going to have to make in my career. When I stood at the end of a packaging line and the packaging line was making my, my development, my innovation mm -hmm. running at, you know, 350 packages per minute, 24 seven. And it right. dawned on me the reality that, you know, everything that we're doing is going up this world. And what is it that, you know, we're doing to be responsible with making sure that, that these are, you know, being dealt with appropriately for the environment. And so I was a young kid back then, you know, I was like 24 years old, 23 years old, but I, I share that story with you because, you know, that's where it all started. And, you know, my story of my career ever since then has been, you know, multitudes of facets of, of looking at you know, ways that you can bring solutions to the market through different groups and different departments. And, and maybe, you know, the simple message there is that no matter what you're doing in your career, no matter what position you have, you have an opportunity to influence the decisions to, to drive more sustainability, whether you're in finance or marketing or supply chain or quality assurance, engineering, research, sales, whatever it might be, you can be part of the solution. And that's, that's kind of where my journey started. And that's what's led me to where I am today. Well said and very true. It's often misunderstood how larger companies are looking at things like sustainability. And it's good to see that people are starting to understand, look, large companies can make big differences with small changes. And so that, that makes me happy to see that you saw that a long time ago in your career. It's been a fun journey. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk about a product that I recently bought and has changed our household. It's called the Lomi. And I'm going to let you tell, tell the story about what it is and, and how it works. Yeah. Well, Corey, Corey I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I've been with Pila now. That's the parent organization for about four months, but this is a, a position that I'm, I'm very excited to be part of this team and, and bringing this innovation into the marketplace. As you, as I mentioned before, I'm deeply passionate about being part of the solution to drive for sustainability. And as I became aware of the Lomi and the, the, the features and the benefits and the properties of, of what we're doing over here at Pila, I just became a huge fan and wanted to really deploy my skills to the best of my abilities to help this company and this technology grow. Not only because I think it's a great company, but because the technology is, is really transforming the industry. So in brief, you know, what is Lomi? For those of your listeners who haven't heard of it, you know, this is a, a revolutionary, I will go on a limb and declare this as a disruptive innovation. And we can unpack that if you'd like. I agree. Uh, but it is, it is a, a countertop appliance that sits in your kitchen. It's a smart appliance. And you're able to take your food scraps and put them in the Lomi. And then once a day, for example, hit go on the Lomi and in about four hours, is going to convert those food scraps into a nutrient rich dirt. One of the reasons why this is so super important and why I'm so motivated about it is because in my 29 years of advancing sustainability, Corey, there's one core lesson that I've learned that I'd like to submit with your audience as well. And that is that sustainability is born on the ant. Okay. It, it doesn't work in my opinion to, to develop a product where it's an or it's this or that. Right. You have to really approach it from a creative design standpoint, and you got to develop a product 
that functionally performs, that delivers mm -hmm. the needs of the consumer or your, your stakeholder you're trying to satisfy and deliver sustainability. Right. And so right. what's really powerful about the, the, the Lalomi is that the team at Pila has, has really done that in a very graceful, a very elegant, and a very sophisticated way because we're delivering a solution to the fundamental challenges of, of people's experiences in their household. So we're all consumers, right? And, and nobody likes stinky, smelly, drippy, <laughs> wet trash. Right. Okay? And so with the Lomi, we're actually solving that. So we've got a lot of people who, who love Lomi, have nothing to do with sustainability. You know, they, they just love the fact that they don't have stinky trash anymore. And, <laughs> you know, instead they got this nutrient rich dirt and I'm fine with that. That's cool, right? Yeah. Uh, what really, you know, what really gets me going is the fact that they're doing that behavior and every time they run a Lomi, we're drawing down global warming. Yeah. So we can quantify that. We've actually done the data and the research on it where we're actually drawing down global warming. So, so all of a sudden now you've got this, this really compelling device that sits in your kitchen countertop and looks beautiful. It runs beautiful. No more stink, no more drip. And every time you're cycling it, you know, you're helping with, with sustainability on a global basis. And so we're really motivated at you know, getting the message out and getting more people to participate it, participate with it. I didn't mention this earlier, Corey, but you know, we're, we're a, a certified B Corp. Yeah. And what that means being a certified B Corp is that, you know, we've got a, like a double bottom line where everything that we do, we have to show the business case for the direct impact on the environment and for the direct commercial impact. And so awesome. it's, it's by doing both of those activities that we get a double green light go for any kind of <laughs> initiatives. Right. And so it, it's really important to me that, that we get more people out there that are actually adopting the platforms because every time somebody adopts it, the bigger impact we're going to have and, and the higher we can report out in terms of our contribution to reducing global warming and drawing down emissions and waste. So yeah, That's it's, it's incredibly motivating to be here. Well, it's exciting. And it's an yeah. exciting time to be a part of sustainable packaging and sustainable living. Those lines are, are crossing more and more these days, which is wonderful. But I want to be very specific with the consumers listening and the people listening, that the reason why this is a reduction in bad gases for the environment is because we're taking those food scraps or even biodegradable plastics and things like that or compostable plastics, and we're essentially turning them into a product that's useful in our homes rather than letting them go to the landfill where they will emit methane gases. Is that the intention here? Yeah, yeah, I can unpack that science for you a little bit because I, yeah. I love the fact that this is one of the things that motivates me about sustainability. <laughs> I started as, as an engineer, so I'm, I'm kind of got the point of years on the geek. And so I always love going into the details. It's just, I always have to be sensitive to my audience as whether they really yeah. want to hear the details or not. <laughs> we do. But, we, this, but this, this audience is, wants to know why and how, I think. So it's great. So, so let's talk about that a bit. All right. So this is a bit of a sad story and a bit of a happy story all in one. So, <laughs> so kind of buckle up. Sure. Uh, the, sad, the sad part of the story is the fact that in North America today, on average, people produce one pound of food waste per day. And when you think about that, and then you figure that the average household in America is about 2.5 people per household, you do the math, and that comes out to about 17 some pounds, 17 and a half pounds of food waste going into your trash every week. Now, that seems kind of abstract until you realize when you're rolling that bin out to your curve each week, that doesn't sound quite too unreasonable. That sounds about mathematically right. And if you look on the macro basis, you know, I think it's 21.6% of municipal solid waste is food scraps. And if you talk wow. to people actually in the, in the field of handling waste, they're going to tell you that numbers got a pretty wide distribution and it goes significantly higher in some situations, but that's a, a decent kind of a mean measurement. So here's the deal with food waste, right? First of all, food waste is it's wet and it's heavy. Okay. And that garbage truck that comes to your house to pick up your trash each week on average gets about 2.8 miles per gallon right and it's a stop it's, it's a large truck and it's going to stop go every house right it, it's like a traffic jam it's just going inch 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 all day long well that mm -hmm. truck also runs on average about 358 miles per week on a route so you got all these emissions coming from the truck itself as it relates to the hauling of the heavy wet organic waste but then further which is the, the larger contributor is the fact that when that organic waste gets to a landfill 
the organic waste degrades in the absence of oxygen. And this is called anaerobic degradation. Now, the anaerobic degradation, what happens is, is the emission that comes from that is methane. And methane is a 30 to 80 times more potent greenhouse gas emission than CO2. And the difference in the spread between 30 and 80% depends on how long the duration you account for it, because it's, it's a long lasting greenhouse gas emissions. And so you, know, you can take on the low end of the spectrum or the higher end of the spectrum in terms of how long it lingers in the atmosphere. Um, but this is in incredibly damaging for, for the environment. Now we can't see the methane, but if you had machine vision goggles or we're doing satellite studies now, NASA is doing studies, there's drones that are flying over landfills, and this is becoming a, a very quantifiable assessment where these landfills are actually blooming of, of methane. There is, you know, efforts being applied to capture landfill gas as recycled natural gas. We applaud all efforts as it relates to, to, to addressing sustainability. But yeah. the hard reality that we're finding is that the capturing of methane gas from landfills is not terribly effective. And it's not terribly effective for a number of reasons. One is because the methane emissions start immediately. They don't wait for the landfill to be capped. The other reason is that the landfills are, are basically stacks and stacks. And what you get is you get pockets of organics. And when the rainwater gets in, you get like underground swamp type of effects going on. And when that happens, the methane blooms. And by you know the nature of, of natural gases and physics, it, it doesn't go to a particular place to exit. It doesn't go up to a funnel to exit. It just basically finds a path of least resistance and it blooms. Right. Right. And so even landfills that have captured the, the methane still only capture a fracture of it, right? It still, it still blooms. And so we look on a global basis of how we're gonna solve global warming. The UNEP executive director has expressed that the number one lever we have to slow global warming is to reduce methane emissions. Oh, wow. okay? there's, a, there's a lot of things we need to be doing, but, but methane is one of those that, that needs to happen and frankly can happen. And, and here's where all that science and complexity comes in to a beautiful little package is that now we have this elegant, smart, sophisticated machine that sits in your kitchen and you can be a part of solving global warming in your own mm -hmm. home. And, and that's, what, that's one of the things that really motivates me because when we talk about global warming and we talk about sustainability, you know, Corey, you're always going to hear this. It, it's they, them, those guys. Right. It's pronouns, right? We're always talking yeah. about something abstract. It's out there. The government needs to do this. The else needs to do this. No, we're, we're now getting into a democratized model where you personally can right. be part of the experience and you personally can start to track and manage your emissions for your household. And, and that is really a beautiful thing because that takes away a lot of the politics. It gets down to the pragmatics of being part of the solution and adapting your lifestyle in a very painless way to do things that are better for the environment. Absolutely. Very well said. And thank you for, for saying it like that. It's, it's an honor to, to be a part of the solution. When I dump the loamy into the, the yard, and I know that it's right next to the strawberries that they're going to plant themselves into that soil soon. It's a good feeling to know that that material didn't end up in a landfill. It's very gratifying. And oftentimes I'm asked, how can I help? What can I do? I want to, I want to be a part of the solution. And this is such a simple thing to do. And over the long haul, it's going to make your life more comfortable and frankly, less stinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that, that's the whole consumer piece of it. That, that's just the beauty. But, you know, going even deeper, because this we just touched the tip of the iceberg, all right? And right. our company is on a hyper growth trajectory and we're doing such really exciting things here. It, it's just cool to be in this whole startup mentality. But the Lomi is a critical piece of a broader strategy, which I'll call organic circularity. Okay. Yeah. And, and this is, this is simple people. I mean, this is, this idea is as old as dirt. Okay. You know, I, didn't make, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make this up. You know, this, is, this is how, this is how earth works. Right. But the reality is when you deal with organic circularity, like any circular model versus packaging, or in this case, we're talking organic circularity. When circular models are occurring, we as humans are, are trying to be part of that circular model. And yeah. when, when you don't, keep the momentum of the circularity going, things fall into a hole. They fall off the grid. In this case, they fall into a landfill, right? And so with Lomi, we're, we're keeping that circularity momentum moving by taking that organic waste and transitioning it to a nutrient-rich dirt. 
But the reason I said that this is just the tip of the iceberg is because that dirt still has value, okay? Right. It's, it's highly nutrient rich, right? So when we think about the bigger picture of solving global warming, you can take that dirt, loamy dirt, and you can now blend it with soils and help support things like regenerative agriculture. And if you yeah. look at Project Drawdown, for example, Project Drawdown methodology and all the approaches to how we're going to address global warming, these other uh, programs like regenerative agriculture are dependent on having healthy soils. And so we're really working on, on keeping that momentum going and, and further valorizing and driving that into other avenues that are going to even take even more CO2 out of the atmosphere. Yeah. I was absolutely, I was very excited to see what your marketing team is working on right now, which is a, a partnership with a local farm and mm -hmm. they based a uh, the local organic farm. And they said, Hey, let us team up with you. Let's see what we can grow with this loamy dirt and compare it to other materials and really show consumers what's possible with this organic material. And mm -hmm. I'm excited to see the results that just started, or at least they've just started posting about it on Instagram, <laughs> but kudos to your team. They're doing a great job with marketing for this. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that, that's, like I said, as a tip of the iceberg, there's a lot of stuff in the, in the pipeline here, but uh, you know, when you think about the health of our planet and healthy soils is a really big part of it. Yeah. And th this is, this is like proprietary. This is, this is public domain information, but you know, we, we've been treating our landscape and our agricultural farms with petroleum-based fertilizers for, for quite some time. And, and I think when you look at it, you're going to realize that not only are petroleum-based fertilizers, you know, very environmentally dirty because of the emissions that are generated in the production of them, but they also, you know, are not as healthy for the soil as natural things like compost. And yeah. so as we look to scale composting, and as we look to make composting you know, ubiquitous around the world and as a you know, mechanism to reduce global warming, we're also creating healthy soils that can help us displace things like petroleum-based fertilizers to create healthy crops. And it's, it's part of this carbon sequestration process, Corey. I mean, this is, this is the whole thing of you know, going back to the basics of like photosynthesis, right? I mean, yeah. the, way, the way photosynthesis works, if you remember from, from school, is that you know, the trees, are like a giant sponge. They're sucking carbon dioxide up out of the atmosphere and they're entombing that carbon dioxide into the fibers of the trees and the fibers of the plants, right? And, and that's where the soils become an integral part of that is because that's the interface where those nutrients are exchanged and where that carbon gets locked in, okay? So, you know, bring that loamy dirt back into that organic circularity, getting it back into, you know, the farming and the harvesting processes, it's all part of the bigger picture, right? And and I think, like I said, we're on the tip of the iceberg and uh, we're gonna do some amazing things with this company. Let's talk about what's next. I'm, sure. I'm thrilled to talk about Lomi 2.0. I okay. This is so cool. I'm kind of <laughs> jealous I don't have one, but excited to buy one when they do come out. Can you, can you talk us through how this integrated network of Lomi's is gonna work? Yeah. Well, first of all, we can get you one. So let me hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm yeah, happy to buy it. Yeah. We're, 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 well, we want to get, we, we want to get, you know, first movers. It's really important. It's our new technology. We've got a lot of things in the pipeline here. As I mentioned, we're a, a hyper aggressive startup. You know, we, we're really doing a lot of cool things. So in our pipeline, we, we've got two things that we, we can talk about today. One of which is, is Lomi Connect and the other is uh, Lomi Harvest. And Lomi Connect is, is everything that we just discussed about Lomi, except it's going to be fully data, data enabled, yeah. which means all the science and the theory and the macro strategy that I just communicated to you, all that has a rainfall, if you will, of data that comes out of that. And right. what we're going to be able to do is now to capture all that data, independently third-party validate it, aggregate it, and report it in a very compelling manner to consumers, but also perhaps even more importantly, which is my, my purview and my scope is on B2B engagements. So if any of your listeners are leaderships and major corporations, you know, the message I have is that we're going to be able to deliver a quantifiable solution that allows you to have a pathway to achieve your net zero goals, because we're going to be able to show you that drawdown of CO2 emissions or, or greenhouse gas emissions to be more accurate 
the drawdown of the greenhouse gas emissions specific to the deployment of LOMIs in aggregate. So for example, if you have a company that's got like 5,000 employees, we have the ability of putting LOMIs into everybody's home and mm -hmm. capturing that data on a smart device, aggregating it, home running it up and allow you to actually track that and report that to achieve your corporate ESG objectives. So it's all with purpose and intentionality. And we're really thrilled to be at a position where we're going to be offering that to, to you know, major corporate employees. The other technology that we just did a soft lunch on, it, it has all the capabilities we just discussed, but it's called Lomi Harvest. And Lomi Harvest is going to be a commercial B2B offering for restauranteurs, cafeterias, and break rooms. It's Amazing. a larger, larger machine that's targeted to to satisfy the needs of facilities that have 100 to 150 seats, you know, about that kind of a size of, of a customer base. Lomi Harvest is a, is a highly sophisticated machine. You can find some reference to it, our soft launch on the web if you look. And yeah. it's going to be a, a plug and play application. So we're intentionally trying to keep this very simple, both commercially and mechanically. It doesn't require, you know, things like pipe fitters or electricians. It's going to be roll it up, plug it in, and then let's get to work. The key difference between a Lomi harvest and a regular Lomi, uh, apart from, you know, the, the sheer size capacity and such is that the Lomi, the Lomi harvest is going to be a continuously operating machine, whereas the, the Lomi for home is a batch machine. So Lomi for home, you put your, your food scraps in there, you close the lid, you hit go, you come back and make dirt. Lomi harvest, as soon as you open the machine, it, it starts, you, know, you put your food scraps in and it starts to run. So it's Amazing. got the ability of, of handling a lot more capacity and throughput. Which is perfect for a, a restaurant atmosphere. I got. I have to assume the amount of food waste that comes out of a prep kitchen is massive, and especially for larger restaurants and facility. Like I think about like a casino or you know some kind of a large venue where at the end of the night there's all kinds of leftover food or you know it's the the potential here is massive. You talked about a five thousand person company. If every person had a Lomi, that's a pound a day of, of mm -hmm. organic material that will be saved and diverted from the landfill and could potentially be used to make, grow more produce or, or whatever they choose to grow. Yeah. Well, in, in that corporate model, Corey, I mean, it, it, it's a pound per day if you've got one person, if you've got, but if you've got a household, if, if, if you yeah. put one Lomi with each employee and that Lomi goes into a household with an average of 2.5 people, then you're going to be able to get that. But here, here's the bottom line. You know, that's, that's all macro. Yeah. With, with Lomi Connect, we're going to have precise data. So it's not, it's not squishy, soft. It, it's, it's, it's known data. So we'll be able to tell with accuracy exactly you know, how much waste you're diverting and, and how much greenhouse gas you're saving. On, on the, the, the Lomi Harvest, for example, when you get into you know, restaurant environments, one of the, the other parts that's really important here is the cost savings. Oh, yeah. Because when you run a Lomi, and I didn't say this earlier, sorry if it was intrinsically applied, but you start off with, with your food scraps. And when you run it through a Lomi, you take out 80% of the mass, up to 80% of the mass of the food scraps. Because what you get left with is a light, fluffy, nice smelling dirt. Nothing stinky about it, right? I mean, it smells really good and it's light and fluffy. So if you fill a traditional Lomi, which is a bin about this big, mm -hmm. and you run it, you're going to come down to like an inch or two of dirt after each cycle. And when you think of a restaurant here and a restaurant operator, that's quantifiably fiscally important to them because number one, you, you're just taking out 80% of the mass of their waste, right? So that's labor right. savings, that's waste hauling savings. But here's another big kicker, Corey, especially look at municipalities and such. We get rid of what we call the vectors and vectors are things like smells, infestation, right? All the right. yucky factors. Yep. And when you run a restaurant or if you run municipality or a multifamily housing development. Yeah. These are real deals, right? Come on, we, we've, we've all lived in the apartment complex and you know what it's like to have a neighbor who doesn't take care of things properly, right? Yeah. So being able to take that out of the equation is a huge, huge factor for, for these, um, you know, these people that are, are dealing with organic waste. It's an, it's an improvement to comfort in lifestyle as well mm -hmm. as a huge advancement in sustainability. Yeah. Well, okay. all those reasons, Corey, is why I said, I, I believe this qualifies as a disruptive innovator innovation, because when you take any kind of a, of, of a, we talk about systems engineering and systems engineering for solutions for sustainability, when you impute a solution that transforms up to an 80% metric driver, you know, 
you, you know you've come into a DI moment because in a DI moment, what is now becomes nostalgic. And right. the idea of, of putting your food scraps into a trash can is going to become nostalgic, right? With, with Lomi's out there, people aren't going to be doing it anymore, right? We're going to look back in 20 years and say, yeah, remember when we used to just throw all of our food scraps in a trash can? Right. right. And that's like, that's like crazy talk, right? Why would you ever do that? And that's where we're heading to. And that's, what's really exciting to be here is because we're at the epicenter of that, that DI event. And I just think that, you know, things are going to really take a hard shift very quickly. I do too. And I think your, your success is proving that it's working because consumers speak with their wallets and your, your sales are impressive. And that's like a hundred thousand uh, households in 10 months, which for a consumer hard good, that's like a stellar uh, cadence massive, for a launch massive sales and it's it's i think it's because it's such a great product and it solves so many issues and people want to be more sustainable and so yeah. well done we're excited thank you it's 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 an absolute thrill and i'm honored to be here and i'm honored to be the team and i gotta tell you Corey, with all the excitement that i'm communicating about the product the company culture and you know the organization is something special in and of itself. Yeah. The, the team here, I'm proud to be part of it and, and they're doing a lot of things right. It's, it's really exciting. Yeah, it's, it's noticeable. I can tell from, from my inner, inner connections with you and you know, even being a customer, how they, they follow up with an email and they say it's shipped and then the instructions you get, even the bag that it comes in is biodegradable and compostable and can be put right into the machine. I thought, Whoa, now that is cool. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? You want to talk about handling of packaging? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the packaging was was brilliant. It was molded pulp, it was corrugated, and then it was a compostable bag. And the absolute minimum amount of packaging I think it could have handled because it is a heavier youth, but it arrived in perfect condition and definitely would pass drop tests and things like that. So well done to your team as far as the packaging. I, I don't have any suggestions for it other than, you know, I think we could, we could look at maybe trying to downsize it further, but I, I doubt that it would work. <laughs> so we, we could always test it. You know, we're always open to those ideas, but I'll tell you, yeah. there's a cool story around this on the packaging. Yeah. So, you know, Lomi, you know, we're, we're very much aligned to the sustainability movement. And when we started the company, we started our founder, Jeremy, you know, has his reputation on, on building, you know, a compostable technology mm -hmm. and a compostable plastics to, to work for things like iPhone cases and such, right? Well, when we built the Lomi, we built the Lomi to be compatible with certified compostable packaging. And we actually have a mode on the Lomi, which is called Lomi approved. And, and the way that works is that we take certified compostable packaging and we go through a validation testing to process it in the Lomi to give it a score and, and assess how effectively we're able to initiate the degradation process. Because we do see Lomi as being a, a future pathway to, to help companies get circularity with certified compostable packaging. And, and oh, here, wow. here's the bottom line on it to make it not too terribly complicated. Certified compostable packaging is, is designed to break down under proper environmental conditions in a compost pile, okay? And to meet that criteria, there's certain performance characteristics that a package needs to perform, okay? It, it's, it's the time, it's the ecotoxicity, it's the actual processing conditions to which it's gonna operate under in a compost pile. All that still holds true with Lomi approved. So we're not shortcutting any of that. We're still holding all that proper due diligence. But what we're doing with Lomi is that the Lomi is initiating and accelerating that natural decomposition process. And so when you take, for example, a certified compostable package that has been made Lomi approved and you place it into the Lomi, it's gonna start that degradation process. In some cases, the material will actually go all the way through to completion while it's in the Lomi. In other cases, it might take multiple cycles in the Lomi. But even, even if it doesn't all the way finish in a Lomi, then what we recommend you do is you take the loamy dirt and you send it to a compost operator where it can, you know, finish maturing over time because by nature of being certified compost, well, it's an important word, then yeah. we have high confidence that the material that we run as loamy approved will ultimately break down in a compost pile. We're just going to start the process, initiate it, accelerate it, 
and, and you know, get that organic circularity, keep that moving. And further yeah. to this point, when you use Lomi approved, you're going to help compost operators with their ability to discern out what's a contaminant because mm -hmm. we're going to have already initiated that degradation process. So you're not going to have, you know, big chunks of non-compostable materials ending up in your waste stream. It's, it's exciting. There are very few times in, in my career when I've been like, okay, this is a game changer. This is, this is something that's going to affect people in a positive way and affect the planet in a positive way. So well done to you. Thank you again for coming on, Gary. We really appreciate it. And uh, I'd like to thank Landsberg Aurora for sponsoring the podcast. If you're listening, make sure you please subscribe and uh, give us a review. We appreciate that so much. Thanks, Gary. Corey, thank you. It's been an honor to be here with you and the team. I appreciate it.